Yo, this is a ton of plays, Pokemon Shining Pearl, and now we are on Route 212, west of Pastoria. And this long route, very long route indeed, because, let's see, that was the wrong one. Look at the top map, see this route. It's so long, it goes up here. Too hard though. It's a very long route, 212. So I think it's the big, by far the longest route in Gen 4. Let's go. First thing you want to do is to go south. Here you can either cross these things and use your bike to go across from here. Also walk around here to get an item, a revive. I like how my Pokemon's on the top there while I am on the bottom. Because of reasons. But we have trainers to fight. Let's go. Can they keep up with us? Of course we can. Bring it! With Pokemon Ranger Taylor, he has two Pokemon. First of those are Luxio! Oh boy! Hello, Luxio. Here's your brother, Lux Ray. They're so cute. They're brothers. Almost. Both using Intimidate, which means both have a minus one attack. That's fine. Let's use Bite. Because we won't do much damage from Spark. This damage is very light because electric types are resistant to themselves. That's why we want to use a non electric move to deal more damage. It depends on the power, though. Sometimes it might be better to use a same move for the bonus. Over something else. Buizo is next. He would a Pokemon. Let's just hit him with a spark. Here it comes. But Buizo is faster, we'll go with another bite. That doesn't matter for me though. One spark is what I need. And Luxray takes down the Buizo. Next one is. No one, because we win. You got energy to burn. Of course I do. Of course I do. Let's grab a team of sex. Toxic! Oh yeah. What, there's someone in the mud? Oh, I can't get up. Oh, help. You wanna run when you get to the mud, because else you'll fall down. Here's the honey tree. Run from here, up here, and around here. Turn tips. If you get stuck in the bog, you can count on being there for a while. There's no need to panic though, just struggle and keep trying to move around for a bit. Bicycles cannot be ridden on marshy ground identically. So what you want to do if you run down, you just you wanna rotate your control stick and eventually it will be popped up again. That which is nice. Their Pokemon become more powerful when it rains. Yep. When it rains, the damage for water types goes up, fire type damage goes down, thunder accuracy is uh, guaranteed, and solar beam cooldown goes from one day, I mean one turn, to two turns. And when it's sunny, it is opposite. That's when fire damage goes up, water damage goes down. Thunder accuracy goes down as well, becoming very hard to hit. And then Solar Beam is instant. Cooldown goes from 1 to 0. And you can Solar Beam every turn if you want to. Goldeen goes down. I won't mind if Gen 9 in the future they will actually make Rain Dance and Sunday, and Sunday Day to become even more uh, different, like adding more stuff to it. It's one of the reasons why they added. Uh, these uh, field abilities as well, like grassy field and and psychic field and everything like that. Basically, it's like like solar, like uh, rain dance and sunny day. Adds new effects to boost damage of some, to reduce others, and cool, cool stuff. When I lose, my tears falls like rain. They call me Rain Woman. Ah, so he's not the Rain Man. I guess not. <laughs> This house here is pretty nice. Remember earlier when they got some shards? Well, here we can use them. 
My big sister collects shards. She says they remind her of places she worked at long ago. If you find 10 shards of the same color, please let me know. I'm glad to trade you a technical machine for them. The red shards will give you TM for Sunday Day. Blue shards will give you TM for Rain Dance. Yellow shards will give you TM for Sandstorm. And green shards will give you TM for Hail. So if you want one of those TMs, just give, give her 10 of a color shard. And she will give you a TM in exchange. Which is uh, very neat. Can't you see I'm fishing? Don't talk! You'll startle the fish. And why does he want to battle me then? Like, if he wants to fish, then why does he want to spend his time fighting me when he should be trying to fishing? Like, this guy makes no sense. Or is it maybe that he's pissed at me because I startled him and now he wants to get payback by beating me in the battle? Except he's using a Gyarados. Even though it is powerful, when you have a fortune weakness to electric, you're kind of asking to be shocked. So, here's some shock value for you. And that's going to make the guy those go down very, very quickly. And level 36 on Luxray. Ponyta is level 30 as well. We're almost in the 30s for all my Pokemon, even though Ponyta and uh, Meditite were put on the bench for quite some time. Stomp is a very good move. It's a normal type move though, which is the best, but it can be a nice move to have in case we can't really use um, can't really use a fire move because uh, resistance. Normal is not resisted by most, it's just rock and steel types and ghosts are immune, which is nice. Jeez! I let a Pokemon and that battle get away from me. Yeah, maybe you should retire from fishing. You don't seem to be very good at it. No offense, mate. Water Pokemon sure get happy when it rains. So do I. Oh, really? Fisher, Travis, he has four Pokemon. And here is Barboach. Barboach is a little eel. It's a water type. However... It's not afraid of Luxray. It also has the Oblivious, which makes it immune to stat reductions. It says no effect on the Spark and Wall Switch because it's also a ground type. Ground is immune to electric, regardless of what the other typing is. That's why you can't use electric moves against a Barbosh. But it's so weak, anyways. Let's just give it a bite. Another Barbosh now. That's when you want to use a Pokemon that can know a Grass move, because while immunity to electric is nice for uh, Barboach, it hates Grass types with a passion. Because Grass has a four time strength against a Pokemon like Barboach. Never been noticed as well that the Pokemon in this route is kind of weak. They're like level 18 to 24 ish. So you should have uh, no problem beating all of them, it's pretty easy. It will be better though, after we get to the 5th gym, and we go move to the 6th gym, we'll get trainers that are in the late 20s, and then in the early 30s at least, in the 7th gym at least, so that's nice. Sadly though, it's going to be a big difficulty spike later on, so be warned. He also has a Shellos, which is the pink one, the West Sea Shellos. Just use another magical leaf. Make it a magical beating for Shellos. Ugh! Just got trampled right under your feet that time. Yeah, I'm sorry. But it was on purpose! Ha ha ha! What's this? I'm proud of my Pokemon. Here, I'll show you why. Ah, oh, it's a collector. In other words, a guy who has three Pokemon the same. Collected Dominic. So he has a Geodude. Does this mean that this guy has three Geodudes? I certainly hope not. But all collectors we have seen so far 
have three of the same. So Geodude is another Pokemon that is also immune to Spark, as you can see, because Geodude is just like the uh, Marbolch, it is also a ground type. It is also a rock type and has high defense, but the level difference makes that it can bite with a single hit. Here comes Geodude number two, as expected, he has the same Pokemon of all. Ugh, boring. Let's give Primplops a buff though. As for the next gym, which is Heartthumb City, we, even though we won't be going to the gym as we get in Heartthumb because we have to go and fix the Psyducks first. Uh, so, Fantina of Heartthumb City is using Ghost types. So that means Dark types are great and Ghosts themselves are great against Ghosts. But generally, the best way I would say is to use a, a, a Dark type. Most ghost types also have low physical defense, or will, uh, well, you say, some are not that low, but they are kind of like below average low. So you maybe want to use a Pokemon that has high attack and knows a dark move like Crunch and Bite. If you have those, you will deal massive damage to a uh, ghost Pokemon. Some ghost types also, also have dual types, like Ghastly Family, for example. Youch! You sure show me how tough you were. Of course I'm tough. I'm tougher than tough. I'm the epitome of tough. I saw people riding their bikes and using a lug just like a bridge. Yep, that's what we're gonna do. Let's use the bike. Spike Rust. Get TM62 Bug Buzz. Bug Buzz is a great move. It's a bug type move, it's a special attack. It's actually one of the better special attacks of bug moves in the game, I think. Let's see, it's uh, 90 power, yeah. So basically it's the it's same power as Flamethrower and all those. So it's a very, very good move, bug move. So if you have a Pokemon that can use Bug Buzz, and that's a special attacker, using Bug Buzz can be a very, very good thing. So I would recommend maybe give it a go, because it's a, it's a very good uh, TM. But I can see none of my Pokemon can learn it, so that is an forge for us. We're on constant patrol. Even at night, it's safe around here. Yes, yeah, so this guy won't fight you now, but if you come here in the evening, this guy will be like, Hey, what are you doing here? Stop! I'm not a criminal, but he thinks I, I'm up to something, so he wants to fight you. Regardless. That's cool though. Go down here. I find it reassuring to be on this damn soil. Okay, why is that? Mr. Scientist Stefano. With Kadabra. Why is the game freaking thinking that all scientists are so skinny? Like you see his uh, chins. He's like... You can see almost his bones from the chin. So Kadabra is just like ghost types, weak to dark, even though he's a psychic type. Plus, Kadabra's defense is absolutely horrendous. So even if you don't use a super effective move against Kadabra, you'll probably get killed in a single hit if you use a physical move. Primplup is 35 and Staraptor is 36. Plus 4 attack now on Staraptor, that's a lot. <laughs> you had to beat me. Well, why should I let you win? You want to battle or you want to make it fair? Winner wins. Loser loses. But like, I will let you win because you're a frail man. Speaking about uh, battles though. Oh, let's have a little dual battle. And yeah, let's have Meditite get some love. Right in here. Are you going doing your part to protect the environment? I am. Our job is to protect the natural environment of this region. Well, be my guest. Let's have a double battle against Pokemon Ranger Jeffrey and Pokemon Ranger Allison with Primplop and Ipom. So a normal type and electric type. This is perfect for us because we have one Pokemon that can take care of the other. 
So we can use Luxray against Primplup and Meditite against Ipom. So this is good for us. First of all, Luxray, Electric type, is effective against uh, like water types. While a Fighting type like Meditite, how about we use our new High Jump kick on Ipom? Here comes Spark. That's a one-hit KO for sure. It does a raining. It doesn't really matter that much. It's only a curiosity for Thunder, which affects Thunder uh, electricity uh, power, so that's nice. Level 30 Meditite, very good. And high jump kick, it misses, and you can see when you miss a high jump kick, half your HP is gone. It's on -ish. Super effective. That's right, because psychic types are weak to ghost. Yes, another print up. I'll have another spark. Let's try to use another hydro kick. It missed once. Hopefully it shouldn't miss again. If it does miss though, we will be KO'd. Spark lands on print up, and that's gonna take it down. Meditite will try again. This time it lands. This is so powerful, 130 power, it's probably, I think it's the highest, highest uh, damaging fighting move in the game. But it does have some really consequences of using it though. Here's Meryl. This is a Pokemon we can't really use High Jump Kick on because it's a Fairy type. And Fairy types are resistant to fighting. It is still a lower level though, so I think we would have killed it anyways, but... Yeah, don't use fighting moves against uh, fi Fairy type. He doesn't really care. For fighting moves. Spark. It's weak to electric though as a water type, so Spark will do the damage against Meryl, taking it down. And that gives us a win. Good! You seem to be a kind of a trainer. We have to get tougher than this. Up here we go. Let's do a little healing now. You see that the uh, high jump kick can be a dangerous thing to do. So there are um, hold items you can use. You can, for example, use a uh, X accuracy. If you use that in battle, or while well, not withdrawing a Pokemon, I think uh, high jump kick should then have a guaranteed hit, unless you're getting hit by sand attacks and so on. Of course, that can be a problem. Should be some hold items as well, which you can use. Oh, I haven't used Amulet Coin. Let's give Amulet Coin to some Pokemon. Let's give it to Luxray. Amulet Coin is very important. Remember to have it on because it increases, doubles the money you get from trainers. You can also give the Mind Plate and Fist Plate to Pokemon to hold them. I usually kind of forget to use hold items. It's not like you need it, it, but it does make life a lot easier. Bear is also nice. Especially the Citrus Berry can be very, very good. It's one of the best berries because it restores 30 HP when you're going below 30%. We're reaching the northern area of Route 212 now, so we're still on the same route. We're still going to do some exploration. However, I'm going to actually stop now because we have more trainers to fight and time is running a bit short. Next episode, we're going to go to the northern part of Route 212. After that, we're going to head east of Hardthumb up to Solasian Town so we can go find the Psyducks. And then we're going to explore the areas north of the areas where Psyduck is get the new town and there we're gonna get some more lore and information about the Sinna region. Of that be, we'll see. Like, comment and subscribe if you follow me on social media. That's great for now, see you guys next time. It's my journey in Pokemon Shining Pearl.